Here we go from Carneseca Arena, Seton Hall, and St. John's for the 110th time as we take a look at the starting lineups. And for Seton Hall, the regular five. For St. John's, it'll be Andre Corbello in the starting lineup as Posh Alexander is available tonight. Jaheen Holloway, Queens native, grew up about five miles from here in his first season as the Seton Hall head coach to go. And they came back to win thanks to A.J. Storr hitting a game-winning three with four seconds left. These two schools have met every year since 1963 and were underway in Queens. Well, you can expect St. John's. They play mostly man-to-man, -man, but they will throw some zone in there, especially against a Seton Hall team that makes less than six threes a game. Neither one of these teams shoots a lot of threes. Casey Nadepo down low, sends it out, and an early turnover by the Pirates. And you know, that's one of their problems this year. They are on a good roll. They've won five out of six, but they turn it over 14 and a half times a game. That was an unforced one there. We were with Seton Hall a couple weeks ago against Marquette when they had a season high 26 turnovers. The most they've had in 11 years. Here is Joel Soriano. Going to be a good matchup against Tyrese Samuel. And Samuel does a good job there holding his ground because Soriano has good moves. Andre Corbello sky high for two. Yeah, he can make that floater. He is a dangerous guy because you don't know. He almost had the steal there, which he's also very good at. Alamir Dawes off the mark in the rebound to Soriano. Third in the country, averaging better than 12 rebounds per game. Nice moves by De Russo, but he is swatted by Nadefo, who has a couple of words for him after the fact. Dawes to the hoop, off-balance shot, no. A foul is called inside. Brian O'Connell, Jeffrey Anderson, and Tony Chiazza are referees tonight. Boy, that was a wh late whistle there. This was a really strong block. It was a strong week. Could have gotten to the foul line there. One thing about this game we're going to expect, Andrew, this is going to be a physical affair. Neither one of these teams shoots well from three. They like to get it to the rim. They like to take it to the basket. That's where these referees have to be careful with this game because it's going to be physical. Omar Stanley commits the foul for St. John, sending Dawes to the free throw line. We met with Mike Anderson yesterday, and he said one of his keys was be physical. He, he knew they were going to have to play tough, and defensive rebounding was a big part of his game plan as well. Well, they did get hurt on the glass in the first game. They lost by 22, and St. John's got out to a great start in that game. They were up 10 points, but Seton Hall just took it to him, scored 46 points in the second half. That's been a problem for St. John's lately, the defensive end. Corbello, that pass right to Dawes. Yeah, that's like... You leave your feet from that far out, that's goaltending. And goaltending called against A.J. Store. I mean, that's Cabello's a talented kid, but he's throwing a ball from one side of the lane to the other. Clearly goaltending there. But, you know, Cabello does some things. You say, wow, that's unbelievable. Then he does some things. You say, what, what was he doing? That was one of the, what is he doing? Yes, I figured that one out. <laughs> Eight turnovers in the previous three games for Corbello and an early one here. Corbello in a tight looking shot off the mark. Soriano cleans it up off the glass. No. And the rebound to Nadefo. And they have to be careful because Soriano, one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. in the country on the offensive glass for Soriano. That jumper goes down for Femi Odicali. That's where he's at his best. Not a great three-point shooter, but he can take it into the lane. And one thing about Seton Hall, Andrew, they get to the foul line as good as anybody in the country. Yeah, on average, 23 times per game. In the first meeting against St. John's, they went to the line 20 times. Store off the mark, but Corbello is right there. Two and a half minutes in, Stanley had his shot altered, and then Nadefo got stepped on by Soriano. And a foul is called underneath. You see Stanley taking it to the basket there. 
when Soriano came down, the Defo was right underneath him, and he was a little shaken up. The foul goes on the Defo. That was one of those ones he couldn't avoid. He's going to stay in the game. St. John's 10 and 3 at home this year. 3 and 3 in the Big East. This is the first time they played at Carnesecca since January 10th in Corbello with another mind boggling turnover. Yeah, that was another one of those other first ones. Richmond lays it in. You know, he is a really talented guy. He, in Big East games, he leaves them in points, rebounds, and assists. They need Kadari Richmond because he is their more consistent. Him and Dawes have to do it on the offensive end. And we asked Shaheen Holloway yesterday, what do you need the rest of the season to make a move into the NCAA tournament? And the first thing he said, we need Richmond to play at a high level every night. Because he's the guy who's got the highest talent level. I mean, they're 57 in the net, so they are by no means out of this thing yet. And they're three, they have three quad one wins. So this is a team that they get on any kind of run in the Big East, they're going to have a great opportunity to get to the NCAA tournament. David Jones checks in for Omar Stanley. He's playing much better lately, David Jones. He played well against Georgetown. He played well at Creighton when we were there last week. A 17 against Georgetown, including eight straight late. The score misses. Soriano, another offensive rebound, had it stripped away, and it was last touched by Seton Hall. A.J. Storr has been so good recently, Big East Freshman of the Week, but they better put a body on this kid. If you're going to let him get down that low without a body on him, he's going to kill you because he's big, he's strong, and he's got long arms. Jones had it knocked away in Seton Hall with a steal. I mean, so, so far, St. John's has three turnovers that you say to yourself, why? Defended by Corbello, and he kept it in bounds. Great job by Andre Corbello. So now we'll take that. Not this time, and Richmond is there. Gary Richmond, the Brooklyn native. There's a lot of connections in this game. Guys who played against each other in high school or AAU. Daniel turn around, no, and knocked away to St. John. Ironically, C. Noel's got a lot of local kids on their team. From the corner, left shot score, and finally something to cheer about here. In Cardesecca for the Johnny's fans. I think A.J. Storer has been the biggest positive for St. John's in the last three weeks. This kid is starting to come on. He's going to be a really good player. He can shoot it from three. Really getting much more consistent. They needed that. They had started one of eight from the floor. Nadimbo could not finish, but a foul is called. David Jones commits the foul as Nadefo tried to rip the rim down. And we're off and running in Queens. Seton Hall. John, this is only February. This is only February, Andrew, and I agree with Coach for the first time since we've been working together. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind, guys, for Seton Hall, they obviously are going to have opportunities to move the needle in the Big East, but they also can't afford any bad losses. Tonight against St. John's, this weekend against the fall, just as critical as moving the needle in the quad one or two area, Andrew. I think it's a great point. I mean, what does a loss tonight do for Seton Hall? Well, at least they're on the road. They're playing that team that's 88 and they're on the road, so it'll be a quad two loss. So it's not the end of the world, but it certainly is not going to help their chances. And now the other thing about Seton Hall tonight that we didn't talk about yet, that Dre Davis, not in this game, and he's been playing really well lately for Seton Hall. Had a team high 15 in the win over Butler on Saturday. Another St. John's turnover, and Oda Kelly makes him pay. And the crazy thing is Seton Hall's running on St. John's. They're 264 in tempo, and in tempo, and St. John's is number four in tempo, yet Seton Hall getting down the court very quickly. Jones left alone, and burns it. They need this kid because before the season started, they thought they had a potential all Big East player in Jones who transferred from DePaul, and he has been very up and down this year, but playing better lately. Last two games averaging 15 points per night. 
Richmond is trapped in front of the St. John's bench. Seton Hall going to get rid of it, and Nadepo this time with the finish. That's one thing about St. John's. They're going to trap you, and if you're good enough or fortunate enough to split the trap, you're going to be able to create situations like that and get easy baskets. Corbello slicing through the lane for two. Yeah, that really was not good defense. Shane Holloway cannot be happy about that one because they've been they were number 14 in defense according to Ken Pop. One of the best in the country. Their problem is scoring. Shane Holloway didn't like that one. Seton Hall has got a game to side for its points. All six field goals in the paint. Boy, St. John's with a big miscommunication on that play. Okay, Russo defended by Richmond. Shot clock down to five. Storm on the drive, and his shot is short. Big rebound by Richmond. Richmond averaging better than five rebounds per game. That's a career best for the junior. Samuel has position on store. And two more inside for Seton Hall. Yeah, he knew he had a mismatch. They recognized it, and they went right to Samuel, who's on the smaller guy. And St. John's calls timeout. And Posh Alexander will check in when we come back. Timeout on the floor. The Pirates up by five. He finished warm-ups and he's in the game right now with 13.03 to go. Well, they need somebody to spark their defense, Andrew. They've seen Hall is seven out of nine from the field and all seven field goals in the paint. So they've got to start getting people out of that paint area. And hopefully for them, Posh Alexander, he is so good guarding the ball, he can help with that statistic big time. And we noticed this last Wednesday in Creighton as Alexander has fouled. That without him last Wednesday, they lack energy. They lack the spark. That's what they also need him to provide tonight. And, and that's what happens. A guy like him, he comes out and he puts that energy on the ball and it, everybody else feeds off it. And I think he is so important. I've been saying it for three years since he's been here. He is so important to the mindset of that team, especially on the defensive end. And defensively, they've been struggling. We saw the Luke give up 104 to great last year. Let's take a look at tonight's Intuit TurboTax player profile. It is Posh Alexander, 13th in the country in steals per game. Number one in the Big East. Mike Anderson calls him a one-man press. And when you're a pressing coach, there's nothing better than to have a one-man press. He likes that. Alexander gets one out of two. Trey Jackson on the floor for Seton Hall. And I like the idea. They played to get him and Cabello. Alexander and Cabello played a lot together during the year. Wow, what a move. Richmond's rejected by Nywee. Great job on Richmond to get there, but Nywee with good position. That Shot clock at four. That was close to a goaltender. Richmond's got to put it up. He didn't notice it. Throws one up, and it's short. Percentage number one in the Big East game winning three against Georgetown on Sunday at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, he said, No big deal. <laughs> I've done it before. No, you've never done it in college before. Storm with a block this time. Today, Russo straight away three. Another one for St. Charles. And Shaheen Holloway calls timeout. And that time of year, are they still freshmen? Yeah, no, they're not freshmen, that's for sure. But, you know, he doesn't shoot the ball that well. So you put in another non-shooter into the lineup. That's why, look out also for Eric Hunter, who has been really good coming off the bench, the Indiana transfer. He has been terrific this year. He's going to play a lot, too. The tip had it knocked away. 
effectively. I mean, he's got to know. He's got to give this up. You're a big guy. You don't hand the ball that often. He's got to know this is going to be a dead charge. You know what's coming. Trey Jackson standing in there to take the charge. Yeah, he's got to give that one up. They've got four turnovers right now that really are not good turnovers. We'll say Alexander looks pretty good. Don't see him limping. He's moving around pretty quickly. And you know, he comes in the game, they go on a run, and they take the lead. So, I mean, that's how much he matters to this team. And a whistle inside. That's going to go on Dylan Adewusu. His first. Hard to see there. He got a lot of ball. Ooh, oh, oh, what a play! The depot throws it down. The depot is flying in this one early. And Seton Hall continues to go inside. All of their field goals have come in the paint. Dribbling by Alexander all the way through. Could not finish, but now he does. Good action on both ends of the court here in Queens. Chance of defense from the fans at Carneseca. Eric Alley with the shot clock at eight. Out to Dawes. Dawes traps it. Wild shot, no good. Well, they're doing a good job on Dawes so far, not giving him really, after that first shot that he made, any open looks. Midway point in the first half. And the step back is there for Posh. He's so strong. And he ended up taking that step back and he created all kinds of space for himself off one leg. That one knocked away inside by Naiwe. Well, take a look at this inbounds play. You're going to take a look. Look at the day Wusu here. He's waiting for the Defo, but the, the Defo gets a running start. You got to be closer to him because once he gets that running start, you can't go up in the air with him. It was really a simple play. No screen, no nothing. The day Wusu got to get closer to him. Alexander will get a breather, but a good sign that he was able to get out there early. Meanwhile, Seton Hall has gone cold. They started seven of nine. Since then, they are one for their last six. Richmond, another miss. And then a frustration foul committed by Tay Davis. And you know what I like, Andrew? I like it that Cabello and Paris Alexander are not playing together. They played together a lot the first part of the season. They shoot 20% from three between them. I think it's hard to play those. They both like having the ball in their hands. I think it's hard to play those two kids together. And Mike Anderson has not done that tonight. 11-2 run for the Red Storm. Colby King on the floor for St. John's. Corbello finds Naiwi, and he'll go to the line. Tyrese Samuel commits the foul. Tyrese Samuel, his first team's third. So Naiwi has been an adventurer at the free throw line this year. He is two for ten. St. John's as a team is last in the Big East in free throw shooting percentage, but Naiwi knocks it through. Check in with John. Well, Andrew, we have seen obviously the intangibles of Karnasek Arena over the last couple of minutes. In St. John's history, the Red Storm have won over 84% of their games here at Karnasek Arena. And, and Seton Hall hasn't been here much. A lot of the times it's at the Garden, but the Pirates have not won in this building in 13 years. I was lucky. I only had to play here once when I was coaching. <laughs> and we actually won the game. That's why you remember it. That is definitely why. Corbello <laughs> applied pressure. Third turnover. 
You know, it's amazing, really. Ever, when Posh Alexander came in, the half-court defense of St. John's changed. And now he's out, and they're still keeping that defense going right now. Jameer Harris on the floor for Seton Hall. Nywe getting a lot of run here in the first half. Counted and won. Wow, Nywe. The senior from Omaha will have a chance at a three-point play. Really nice drive there. Nywe had been scoreless in his last three consecutive games, but he's already got five points tonight in the first half. Last Wednesday night in Creighton, back where he went to high school in Omaha, he had a lot of family and friends in attendance. This is the free throw, Richmond the rebound. 24-17 in favor of St. John's. Pirates have won five of their last six. And you know what, Andrew, St. Hall hasn't gotten any transition in a long time, and they've been struggling a little bit in the half-court set. Harris catching shoot three. And he still cannot turn the tide this season. Almost a 40% shooter for his career. Shoot 21% this year. Really struggling for the three-point line. Curbelo, no. And Seton Hall with numbers if they hurry. Yeah, I think they're better off when they push it. Richmond is fouled. And a timeout with 7.37 to go. Back and forth between Seton Hall and St. John's. You're watching Big East basketball. A lot of games where it's been something. He played St. Peter's. Now he's coming back home. And he said, I'm looking forward to next year. When I've already gotten all those things out of the way. It's not the first time doing this anymore. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously this guy was in big demand in the offseason. They ended up with one of the great runs in the history of the tournament when you think about it and I still say it I know I know when UMBC Virginia was a 116 game but I think the 215 St. Peter's beating Kentucky is the biggest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament I, mean, I don't know if you've ever been to St. Peter's if you compare St. Peter's facilities to Kentucky's facilities it's a little bit different I thought he made an interesting point in our call with him as well that he said the coaches in the Mac really helped prepare him for this league. A lot of great coaches in that league, underrated, obviously Rick Pitino at Iona, but he thought that helped him get ready for the Big East. Oh yeah, I'm sure it did. Soriano tied up inside. 7.20 to go, first half. Cordello squeezes one into Soriano on a foul. And yeah, that was uh, almost an ill-advised pass. And I think they would be, I think it would help them a lot if they get Soriano a little bit more involved in this game when they're in the half court. He has not scored yet. He does have five rebounds. Ade Wusu, another four. And he made four threes against Georgetown. He's been playing really the starting lineup last four games shooting 42 percent from deep and it continues here tonight Dawes turns it over numbers for the red storm storm missed it but he's fouled and yeah, probably should have just laid that one up i'll tell you what they didn't guard Dawes very well in that first game but they're guarding him really well in this game so far and Steve, that's the third foul in the first half on Casey Nadefo. Yeah, well, he obviously has to go out now. <laughs> Nadefo exits Trey Jackson back in. How about this for St. John's? They're five for five from deep. They average 5.9 threes made per game. And Seton Hall is one of the best in the country at defending the three-point line. Tops in the Big East at 29%. 29-18 in favor of the Red Storm. Now Posh and Corbello in the game together. 
Jackson size advantage on a day Wusu in the lane and threw it away. Seton Hall, after those first few minutes, has really been out of sync offensively. I mean, in that in the first few minutes, they were getting a lot of transition. They were pushing it up in the half court. They have really struggled. No field goals in close to five minutes for the Pirates. And we're going the other way. A whistle away from the ball and a foul on Posh Alexander. Mike Anderson told us that for the most part this last week Alexander has been in the training room But he did do a little bit at practice yesterday. He wanted to see how he would respond today and Obviously all systems go with Alexander Coming off the bench for Mike Anderson tonight He doesn't look like he's limping at all Pirates need a bucket Samuel working on Soriano. Soriano rejects it. Samuel gets it back. Goes up. Misses. And it's saved by Davis. Shot clock resets to 20. Curbello with the steal. What a play by Curbello. And the fans love his hustle. Yeah, I mean, Soriano does a great job of defending the rim here twice. He gets a for sure block there that he had a piece of this next one also. He got a piece of that one. Tyree Samuel commits his second foul. So he comes out of the game and now he got some foul trouble for the Pirates. And as John Rothstein told us off the top, Dre Davis is not playing tonight out with a sprained right ankle. So they're a little bit thinner than normal. Yeah, they normally play eight guys. Right now, they're going to play seven. Five and a half to go in the first. But St. John's half-court defense has been very, very good. For fellow aggressive defense, it'll stay with Seton Hall. Certain flair about Curbelo. We we're talking to Sean Miller, the Xavier coach, about that last week. He yeah. said he had him chuckling when they played each other, and we saw him dancing pregame. When the Latin music came on in the pregame, he was going at it. It was fun to watch. Shot clock at four. Richmond lays it in. A big bucket for Seton Hall. Gene Oliver was looking for a foul as well. What a move. Points for Richmond. Curbelo. Store for three. Oh, way out there. And a steal by Adel Rusu. Adel Rusu trying to go coast to coast. He did a good job there using his body when he went to the basket. Richmond, the only way Richmond was going to get to him is if he fouled him and he backed away from it. An 11 point Red Storm advantage. Jackson for three. Ooh. And a foul against Seton Hall. Tay Davis commits the foul. The day Wusu, I mean, they average nine steals a game, so you, you got to be strong and tough with the ball. He has a strong finish there. Foul on Tay Davis is his second, so he comes back. He comes out, and Alamir Dawes, who was getting a breather, has to come back on the floor. So a big foul trouble now for the Pirates. A.J. Store at the line. Let's check in with John Rothstein. Well, Andrew, look at A.J. Storr already with nine points. Now it's ten. This season, when A.J. Storr scores in double figures, St. John's is five and two. All right, John, thank you. And there you see the Seton Hall foul trouble. And another foul against the Pirates. Odie Kelly commits the offensive foul, and he now has two. And Shaheen Holloway is getting confirmation. It's adding up quickly on that Pirates bench. 
Yeah, and this is not one of their strengths is depth. Like we said, especially with Dre Davis out of the lineup, he was only playing eight guys as it was. So now Jaquan Sanders checks in. He's a Queens native. He initially committed to St. John's, but then his mom wanted him to get a little further away from home, wouldn't be distracted by his friends, so he changed to St. John's. Corbello could not get that one to drop. Sanders has averaged two points per game, but Shaheen Holloway has to turn to his bench here with all the foul trouble and 345 to play. Oh, nice pass, and Sanders puts it in. Off the feed from Richmond. You know, that's where St. John's gets into trouble sometimes. They're so aggressive trying to double and things, and sometimes they lose guys and give up a complete layup. Soriano travels. And Soriano is still scoreless in this game, but the Red Storm looking good. Boy, they look different today, that's for sure, playing great defense in the half. And how about the American Dream, Ed Cooley? He loses five starters from last year's team that won a Big East regular season title and advanced to the Sweet 16, and Providence should again be in line for a great seed in the NCAA tournament, Andrew. Lab, what do you think about Creighton? I came away very impressed when we were with them last week. They were preseason number nine. There's a reason, and they played great in Maui. They beat Arkansas. They beat Texas Tech. Doesn't look as good right now because of what they're going through in the Big 12. Them. But let me tell you something. This team has all the out. They're starting five. They got five guys averaging 11 points or more. I mean, nobody has that in the country. This is a team that can really score. They got a big guy, a great point guard. They could go deep. Harris for three. Yes. And Seton Hall desperately needs that. Not only they need that, they need it from him. Shaheen Holloway told us we've got to get him going. They know what he's capable of as Richmond comes away with a steal. Racing up ahead with Alexander back. Rejected by Storm. Wow, what a block by the freshman. Sanders for three is good. His 10th three of the year and a spark off the Seton Hall bench. Yeah, how about this kid? Doesn't play that much. Comes in five points. Last year's New York State Mr. Basketball. Alexander trying to answer. You're yeah, not crazy about that shot. And what they really need to do, when you need a basket, you got number 11, Soriano, throw him the ball inside. You got to run, you want to stop. That's the best way to do it. Two minutes to go. Jackson for three. He gets one to drop. And Shaheen Holloway is loving this. An 11 0 run. Well, you know, the difference in the game, the reason why St. John's was up 11 because they had made five threes and Seymour had made none. Now they've made three. Timeout St. John's. Seton Hall getting unexpected contributions for all three pointers. Yeah, I mean, that's why they were down. They hadn't made one. St. John's had made five. You know, interestingly enough, this run happened with both point guards on the floor for St. John's, Corbello and Posh Alexander. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but maybe the space is not there for Soriano, but he needs to get a touch. Richmond got a hand on that one. Ade Wusu able to recover. What is that? They're playing very small right okay, now. Got Thanks, AJ Storr is their foreman. Here's Soriano. And he still can't get on the board. Dawes up ahead to the hoop. Missed it. The follow by Jackson. No, but Dawes recovers. It's just amazing. All of a sudden, there's a whole different spot in Seton Hall. Happened all of a sudden when they started making some shots. Oh, that's a good move. Richmond draws the foul. Now's on AJ Stewart. I was reading in his bio, Andrew. I mean, he's a Brooklyn kid. They were calling him Cooks because he cooks people in the playground. Yes. He could definitely cook some people in the playground. <laughs> let me tell you. Spent his first year in Syracuse and then now in his second season at Seton Hall. Preseason All Big East second team. And you look at his stat line for the first game against St. John's. 
19 points, nine rebounds, six assists, and three steals. He's a talented, talented kid. He's got a real upside, and that's what Shaheen was talking about. He knows he's the best player on the team, and he can be one of the best players in the league. He's just got to be more consistent. Defending Alexander, Alexander gets it back. Nagui inside on the foul. They're calling this game tight, lap, but they kind of have to with what you said. They have to, you know. We, we kind of knew what kind of game this was going to be. You got two teams that grind it out defensively, that don't shoot the ball particularly well. There was going to be a lot of this game going to the basket, and that's what's happened. And you know, both these teams rely on steals. They both average over eight and a half steals a game. And when you do that, there's going to be a lot of hands involved in the game. That was on Trey Jackson, sending Nywe back to the free throw line. The two worst free throw shooting teams in the Big East. St. John's at 67%. Seton Hall 68%. Up empty. A lot of side spin on that free throw. Dawes fakes the three. Oh, another fake pass, but he could not put it in. Nywee the rebound out of bounds to Seton Hall. They yeah, give Nywee credit for contesting that shot. That's why Dawes didn't make that. Yeah, that's off the side. And the rebound is grabbed by Adewusu with a two-second difference between game clock and shot clock. Aja Alexander doesn't care. Yeah, I was going to say they should get the last one, but you're going to get a layup. Oh, that's a flop. Wow. They call the foul on Richmond. Whoa. And Shaheen Holloway is saying, what are you doing? We're going to hold for one shot anyway. Yeah, that's true. It was a bad play, but I mean... Oh, wow. Uh... He definitely stuck the arm out, there's no question. Did he stick that arm out to make that kind of a fall happen? I don't know. Definitely could have been a flop. I think that's what Shaheen Holloway is saying, too. But he makes a good point. We're going to hold for the last shot. So there was a that was a key mistake right there. And Mike Anderson was mad that they didn't hold for what yes. was essentially the last shot, and now he'll get it anyway. But at least his guy scored. <laughs> That's a good point. Shot clock is turned off. Curbelo. Shot is short. Two seconds left. Richmond whips one up. Back the hole. St. John's led by as many as 13 in the first half, but Holloway's group goes into the locker room down by three. St. John's is 10 and 2 this year when leading at the half. And there's been three times that the Pirates have been down at the half and come back to win. 110th meeting between these two, and the second half is underway. This is not some play for Soriano. There it is, Lap. He called it and the foul. Mike Anderson told John Rothstein before we went to break at the half, we got to get him in position to score more, and right out of the gate they do that. Yeah, I mean, they run a pick and roll here, and he slips the handoff right away. He gets two free throws out of it. Odie Cowley picks up his third foul, so both Odie Cowley and Nadefo have three for Seton Hall. And you got to keep your eye on that because if one of them picks up the fourth, he's gone for 15 minutes. St. John's was just 6 of 12 from the line in the first half. Seton Hall was 3 for 8. 
I would probably take one of those two guys out now, at least for a couple of minutes. Having two guys in with three, you know, those are two guys you have on the floor that are saying to themselves, I'm not fouling. So Soriano finally on the board here early in the second half. and he could not connect with Samuel. And they saw they had the mismatch because St. John switches a lot. Samuel down low with a guard on him, and they couldn't get it to him. Ten turnovers by the Pirates tonight. Corbello <laughs> comes to get it. Dribbling through traffic. Corbello looking for someone to throw to. Store. Store lost it out of bounds. It's Seton Hall basketball. Capello leaves his feet a lot. I don't know where he's going. You I mean he he leaves his feet and he just figures out what he's going to do when he's up in the air. It's not really the, a good way to go. His father Luis played pro basketball for 18 years in Puerto Rico. Here's Kadari Richmond. Into the corner it goes. Wide open in the count. Just a 28% three-point shooter. Are they loose ahead of the pack and now they're retreat? We've got a chance to go to Soriano. He's got it now. Defended by Samuel. Soriano spinning on Samuel. Comes up short. And Richmond with his career high 11th rebound. Trying to go end to end. And he can't finish. But he's got to finish that. And he steals it from Soriano, but Soriano gets it back. Sloppy start to the second half. And Deusu is fouled. That'll go on Tyrese Samuel, and that's his third. So now three Pirates have three fouls apiece. I think those are the plays that Kadari Richmond does that drive Shaheen Holloway crazy. He's got to finish that. And that wasn't even a real... It was a bad miss that ended up being... for the Pirates, number one, Trey Jackson. Trey Jackson comes in to replace Samuel, who just picked up his third. Yeah, right now, I mean, you definitely had to get him out. They got two guys in the game with three fouls. And the bench play well. Play Sanders a little bit. A 12-2 run late in the first half for St. Paul. It was sparked by their bench. Shot clock at five. And they lose over the score. A deep three way off and a whistle on the follow as Stanley is fouled this one goes on Kadari Richmond his second foul and already three fouls Stanley from Overland Park Kansas Everyone always wants to blame the coaches when the free throws don't go in lap. Yeah, you no, know, it happened to me, believe me. <laughs> People are crazy. They think it's practice. You know, every coach in America practices free throws. Two of the worst free throw shooting teams in the Big East here tonight. 38-32 in favor of the Red Storm. Dawes launches a three. And the rebound is grabbed by Stanley. I mean, that was not a good shot. I know he's a good shooter, but he's really forcing the issue a little bit now. One for eight tonight. A day Wusu to the hoop. And the rebound is scooped up by Dawes over to Nadefo. He'll bring it up the floor. Whoa. Tough pass. Jackson is there. Richmond thinking about a three. He's made 11 of them this year. Gets a shot from the free throw line here and hits. And a little too easy. I don't mind games is not happy with that. Just made one little move and pulls up inside the lane. Storm catch and shoot three. And the tempo clears on the weak side. The pace of this game is slowed down here in the second half. Richmond for three. Yes! It's 12-3 of the year, and it's a one-point game. 
quickly the other way. Soriano inside. Now his Knights. He was looking for a foul. But that was nowhere near. Maybe he was thinking about dunking that early. Richmond could find inside. Jackson is bumped. I mean, yeah, Kadari Richmond's not a great three-point shooter, but a Day Wusu has his hands down. And that's just too easy. And a Day Wusu committing his second foul on the other end. Josh Alexander is going to come into the game for a Day Wusu, and David Jones also said to check in. Well, they could use a little burst here. Last time they needed a burst, they brought Posh in, and he gave it to them. It'll be Richmond inbound for the Pirates. The inbound, another foul. AJ Store commits this one, his second. Yeah, they switched there, and AJ Store ended up on the big guy. We expected a lot of fouls in this game, and. Our expectations were correct. Oh, to Kelly at the inbound. That's too easy. I mean, you just saw them almost give a play play before that. Then they fouled, and then they give a lay up there. First lead since it was 15 to 14 for Seton Hall. Alexander behind the back. Bello high up to the sky. No good. And the ball goes out of bounds. And they will take a look at a timeout on the floor. Seton Hall making an early run. They now lead by one. Bring into a good one here in Queens. A one-point game with 15.59 to go. So Soriano, Sunday against Georgetown, was 3 out of 14 from the floor. And tonight, he's over 5. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't gotten nearly the looks that he should get. But obviously, you know, he's on top of the scouting report because of the kind of season that he's had. But he's got to adjust. Here's Richmond. It's on the depot. Shot clock at 10. The depot has got two red storm on him. Able to hold on. Dawes for three. It's good. Before that last time now, Shaheen Holloway came on the court right in that exact spot. And we're showing Dawes how to pump fake and shoot it. <laughs> and how about that? It goes in. It's a 10-0 run. I mean, Dawes shoots this into the sky. Cabello got his hand up. Just made a good shot there. Meanwhile, St. John's is now 0 for 7 shooting in the second half. They've got ice cold. Jackson. And a foul is called on Soriano. That's his first. It was a good move by Jackson. Normally doesn't put the ball on the floor. Jackson's been playing a little bit out of position this year. Now Shaheen Holloway confirming that Alexis Yetna will not play this year. So there's a little more on Jackson's plate to play the four, even the five at times. Richmond drops. Shot no good. He was looking for fouls, but there was no foul. Wow. Four the other way. Jones steps into the three. Carries it. This guy, when he's right, he can play. Shooting 38% from deep in conference play. And it's back to a one-point game. And he just makes some bad decisions sometimes, takes some bad shots, turns it over. But if he's right, he's good. The tempo on the drive. No good off the glass. Corbello is there behind the back. Now he locates Alexander. To the corner it goes. Storm. St. John's back in front. And really, what is it? That tempo. They're number four in the nation in tempo. They are also top 25 in fast break points. That's what they like to do. That's what they're talking. Dogs, another three on the way. This one won't go. 
Rebound over to Kelly. Inside, Jackson, the flush. Cabello brings it across at a foul. It's called on dog. He can get a technical foul. Cabello has to be careful. He threw the ball and opened Conley's back. Not hard. But it's a time, it's the type of thing they can get you a technical foul. Well, in the first game between these two on New Year's Eve, Soriano and Nadefo had some interesting conversation, and there it is, Nadefo and Corbello this time. Yeah, that that can get you a technical foul. You gotta be careful. I like it that nothing happened, they didn't call it because it was light, but a referee would have been within his rights to call that if he wanted to. Corbello drives. Oh, it in. Oh, and a technical foul on both Corbello and Nadefo. Corbello takes his glasses off, and someone's been ejected. They threw Corbello out. Corbello's been thrown out of the game. You're going to see here, you see, look over the colleagues say, look, he threw his glasses. It's got to be another one. And then Brian O'Connell gave it to him. So Dawes will shoot the free throws. Now, the foul on Nadefo, the technical, is his fourth. So Nadefo is going to have to come out of the game as well with 1338 to play. Yeah, they got the sub at the table for him. So four on Nadefo, he comes out, and now Curbelo is out of the game. Tied at 46. And there's the foul trouble for Seton Hall. You know, I mean, with Corbello on, obviously they got Paul Alexander, so in a lot of ways I was saying I'd rather have just one of those point guards in the game. Which game lost it. St. John's running the break. Jones, move the way, no. And a foul on the rebound. Alexander was fouled. Third foul against Tay Davis. Well, these fouls are adding up. St. John's will be shooting free throws the rest of the half. That's four on him. And that's four on Femi Cali. Well, look, I mean, they've been calling it this tight all night. It's it's not anything new. If I got three fouls, I'm not going to bring my arms down on them like Oda Kali did there. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to get your fourth like that. Oda Kali exits, and Jameer Harris is back on the floor. And now you look at the updated foul trouble for Seton Hall. Alexander, two out of two at the line. Eighth in the Big East in steals per game and adds another one to his total. Yeah, I mean, one thing about St. John's, you turn your back and you're not ready to take it. Shaheen Holloway is looking down his bench thinking, who, who can I put out there? He's going to go to Tyree Samuel, who has three fouls. And it doesn't really matter you know, taking Trey Jackson. I was going to say, those two don't play together very well. Samuel has done nothing in this game. He needs to start exerting himself down low. Just two points for the big man. Yeah. 
St. John's with a very small team out there. They had it, they had this team in the first half too with AJ Storm. Well, David Jones, I guess, is the foreman. Richmond steps into the three. Jones, the other way. I mean, this is a nice move, but Seton Hall not really ready. Ty Davis standing up, got to get in the stands, especially when you're guarding a guy like this that can put it on the floor. Just went right by him. And now Davis has four fouls. And if you're just tuning in, his brother Dre Davis, who's usually the first guy off the bench, is out tonight with a sprained ankle. So. Shaheen Holloway's got a lot of foul trouble and a thin bench. If I've seen all of them to go zone. They play zone. They've played it about 10 or 7 times this year. They need to play a little zone. Especially foul trouble. It slows these guys down a little bit. And a travel against the Pirates. Tay Davis is staying on the floor with the four fouls. Just had a lot of other options right now for Holloway. Yeah, but if you're going to lose a guy, he's a guy to lose. I think that they, they are not stopping the foul off the dribble at all. Alexander was short, but a foul is called. And that's going to go on Tyree Samuel. And that's his fourth. All sorts of foul trouble. trouble a little bit better that way. And Holloway's keeping two of the four players with four fouls on the floor. Both Samuel and Davis stay out there. Now he's had a nice night with seven points and four rebounds. Yeah, I mean, considering the average is about one and a half a game, two points. Season high in points for Nywee, but it gets one out of two at the line. Dawes is tying his shoe during the possession. Richmond to the hoop. And finished. Tate hey, Davis, the offensive ball. Rejected by Nairi. Oh, Nairi continues to make his presence felt. And Ade Wusu got really leveled on the screen up top. You're going to see it right here. Could have been the fifth on Samuel. Yeah, it was close enough. Glass, yes. Jameer Harris with a big bucket. I think they're going zone. Yep, they did. Good call, Lap. You were on that one. Kim inside. Nairi finishes. So much for my call. <laughs> I mean, they, they half the team, truthfully, half the team didn't know they were in zone. They did it on the fly. Dawes had two up but a lot of guys didn't see it they didn't know what they were in. they were supposed to be in zone seven point game Dawes for three it's good Dawes with a three and it's a four point game 10 40 to play now they're all in the zone a heck of a pass by Kadari Richmond. Sure how, was. How he knew that Samuel was going to beat them down. I mean, this is like a day Wusu has no idea where the ball is, as you could see there. But that was a heck of a pass and a nice finish. That was on Naiwi, and now Samuel with a chance to finish off the three-point play. So what I'll say about the zone is, let's face it, take down the team likes to go off the dribble. Now they have to do something a little different. Not to say they can't beat the zone, but at least they have to do something that they're not doing in this game. 
Let's check in with John Rothstein. Andrew with that three-point shot in the possession prior. Alamir Dawes is now in the double figures. When he scores in double figures this year, Seton Hall is 11-3. They're 2-6 and six when he does not, Andrew. John, thank you. Posh Alexander lays that one in. And boy, they had a turnover there. They just couldn't come up with the ball. Samuel spinning on Nywe for two more. Well, now Samuel's waking up in the low post. Kobe King from the outside. Oh, good. That shot. Rebound Jones. Kobe King now 3 of 13 on threes this year. Turnover by Jones. Dawes is going to stop and pop. And hit. can really shoot it, and he knows he can shoot it. I'll tell you, this zone, I think, has changed the complexion of things a little bit. See St. John standing around now. King drives. Wild shot, no good. Harris the rebound. He wants to push. I mean, he is taking two shots in this game. Does he check? against St. John's defense. I mean, four guys with four fouls on Seton Hall. Let's see what St. John's does coming out of the timeout. Now some pressure. Yeah, they're going to stick to this zone. That they got, that Shaheen got from... Ralph Willard, while he was Kevin Willard's assistant at Seton Hall. Richmond got a hand on that, and a turnover by the Red Storm. Yeah, their attack of the zone has been awful. They haven't thrown the ball to the foul line area at all, or to the baseline. Keep in mind, after that last time out by Mike Anderson, St. John's only has one left. Harris from deep. Seton Hall can't miss. They could make one in the first half. Largest lead of the night for the Pirates. I think the zone has done the job so far, Andrew, huh? No doubt about it, Lap. And Richmond with another rebound. A career high 13 for Kadari Richmond. Got to give Shaheen all the way credit. You think about the momentum of this game and how it changed since Corbello was ejected. Yep. But a different game. Different game. They need a good Posh Alexander for these last seven minutes. Into double figures with 11 points for Alexander. 11th time this year he's done that. Hey, well, Kadari Richmond has played a lot of minutes tonight. He's been the only Seton Hall player not in foul trouble, so he's had to stay out there. I mean, he's not going anywhere. Davis finishers off the feed from Samuel. And this crowd has gone quiet at Carnesecca. Seton Hall has flipped the script. Serrano inside for two. I mean, go to him. Samuel's got four fouls. He definitely, you know, he's just going to take it to the basket on that was Soriano's first field goal of the night. That's 6-10 to play. Richmond defended by Alexander. Richmond's going to put it up. Good, good. And a rebound for four by Jones. But good to get back on defense. Alexander a little too fast, but Jones takes it right back. Give me Tyrese Sam. One of the three. Soriano commits the foul. Not crazy about that shot by Jones. And that 
takes us to a timeout. Good one here. 19.2 points per game this season for Herb Sendak. Just over a point a game last season. And here's another thing. Loyola Marymount tomorrow night playing BYU. The Lions have separated themselves as the third best team in the West Coast Conference after that win at Gonzaga. And they still get Gonzaga and St. Mary's in Los Angeles. This team has already beaten Nevada, Wake Forest, and Gonzaga this season. The biggest buzz around Loyola and Bo Kimball. Uh, good stuff, John. Looking forward to tomorrow night on CBS Sports Network. Six-point Seton Hall advantage with five and a half to play. They show zone, then they match up. Soriano, not his night. He's one for seven from the floor after a three for 14 performance on Sunday. And the Depo with the four fouls at the scorer's table for the Pirates. They put a lot of time with those guys out of the game. They just buy time. They made the most of it. Exactly. Richmond cuts. His defense is there. Kennedy and one for Kadari Richmond. This is a great back cut by Kadari Richmond. They were denying him the ball, and he made a nice cut. Store actually opened up. You saw he had his back to his man and opened up completely to the ball there, and that's why he got beat back door. Second double-double of the year for Richmond. He's got 13 points and 12 rebounds. He also had a double-double against UConn when he went for 18 and 10. I'll tell you what, Andrew, Corbello being out in the zone turned the game around. Soriano, let's Let jump up and sit down. He pushed off against Tyrese Samuel. And that's the third against Joel Soriano. I mean, I think this is a pretty easy call right there. Largest lead of the night for Seton Hall, trying to add to it here. Jameer Harris with some good minutes off the bench tonight for the Pirates. He's got the ball here. Over to Samuel for three. Tyree Samuel, just his ninth three-point attempt of the year. Chris Alexander pops it up. That's a bad turnover. And Seton Hall will use some clock. Four minutes to go. I think they still got to go. Since Curbelo was ejected, Seton Hall's outscored St. John's 25 to 15. Make it 27 to 15. And Seton Hall goes timeout. Richmond another bucket. It's a ten other way around. That's what they normally do But Seton Hall has really taken advantage of those 15 turnovers the St. John's had See our game reset St. John's Trying to dig down deep with just 350 to play They've got to get somebody in the high post area Get it to the baseline. You got to split these guys in the zone. Thing. That's where you got to throw the ball. Right there. And Jones gets it to go. Seton Hall trying to close out their fourth consecutive Big East Road win. The Deco. Out to Richmond. And no rush to use that shot clock. The Depo baseline to the hoop for two. That's what you call a good possession. You run the clock down that far, you end up with a layup. AJ Store had 10 points in the first half, only three here in the second half. And he's been quiet. He hasn't been a factor at all. He's got the ball here with the shot clock at nine. Over to Alexander. Alexander takes a bump, shot won't go. Soriano is fouled on the rebound. And that's going to be on Tyrese Samuel, and that'll be his fifth. Number four, Tyrese Samuel. 
Popkin, they're in their 20th year together. And John Minko, the St. John's play by play guy, the Mink Man, celebrated <laughs> his 70th birthday yesterday. So we've got some elite company here. Oh, on first yeah. row. Those guys are they're iconic guys in this area, no doubt about it. Soriano at the free throw line. In the first game, he had 23 and 11 against Seton Hall, but tonight just five points and eight rebounds. Gets them both though. 73-65, with 234 to play. Now you can expect the pressure. That's why they take Soriano out. Bring Naiwi back in a little more athletic. Go to Cowie to inbound to Richmond. Inter interesting, Andrew, that, you know, Richmond gives it up because he's got Pac Alexander on him because they feel better. Oh, to Collie bring it up. Go to Cowie cuts. Shot clock at nine. Trey Jackson. He drives in the paint. Hands off down low to Defo. No. Alexander the other way with two minutes to go. And Jackson knocks it out of bounds. Last touch by Seton Hall. St. John's only has the one timeout remaining. Seton Hall has three. These fans have gone quiet. And St. John's in danger of losing for the third time in their last four games. Seton Hall goes man to man. Jones, too strong. The tip is there by Soriano. Six point game, four to the play. You know, from the fans. You gotta sit on it a little bit, but you still gotta be in attack mode. And Seton Hall calls timeout with 1.33 to go. Tell you what, Seton Hall, with all the foul trouble. Andrew, you know, I just heard Shaheen Holloway tell his team to be mindful of the team fouls. If St. John's draws a foul, it's going to stop the clock and put St. John's at the foul line to trim this lead. He stressed that, and it's very important, obviously, over the final 93 seconds, Andrew. All right, John, thank you. There's the high pick and roll that we talked about. Better get it into a playmaker's hands. Because Richmond should be going for this ball. Jackson drives and he's fouled by Nywe with the shot clock down to eight. That was really interesting to me that Kadari Richmond let the ball stay in Trey Jackson's hand there so that he could make a play off the dribble. But it worked out. He's going to the free throw line, but that was just surprising. It's been an adventure for both of these teams at the free throw line tonight. Seton Hall is just six for 14. St. John's not much better. 16 out of 25. At least they've gone to the line 10 more times. Sorry, on the back in the game. One out of two for Trey Jackson. Today, Usu. Quickly to the hoop. Good defense by Seton Hall. Saves with St. John's. Jones drives. Off balance shot, not there. And we have a whistle inside. And that's going to go against the Pirates. That's the fifth on Oda Kelly. So he's now. Eight points for Soriano tonight. He gets two shots. He's a 70% free throw shooter on the season. And one out of two. Six points down. They could go one possession without fouling. 
Full court pressure by the Red Storm with 102 to go. Alexander got a hand on it. And it stays with Seton Hall. And now they're going to take a look. Take a look as well. See Alexander coming in. It's close. And say Posh. That's the last to touch it. And it is seeking all basketball. Seen all you want to get this ball. In. Dawes is taking the ball out, and he's really their best free throw shooter. That's off St. John. And they'll stay with Seton Hall one minute to go. And Dave Wusu is pleading his case, and he wants them to take a look. Yeah, that's a waste. They had that one. That was close. The depth order inbound. And the injured St. John's player behind the play. And now they're going to stop it. Ade Rusu is shaking up. He's saying they should look at it. Or and into Trey Jackson. And now the officials are going to look at that. So we've had three reviews in five seconds. It's a record. <laughs> this may be the longest game of the year, too, by the way. <laughs> and nothing will be called. Yeah. Um, unless they call a flagrant, they can't just call a foul on it now. Now, if it was a flagrant, they can go to the monitor and say it's a flagrant. But not a common foul. And then Wusu appears to be okay. He's staying on the floor. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> Look at it, they Wusu's holding. Yep, That's and a foul call. Yeah, that was all set up by Kadari Richmond pointing it out before the play. Yeah. Ryan O'Connell was looking right at it, and then when Dawes came across, the Wusu hit him, and that's a foul. I really don't see what a Wusu's upset about. He fouled him. <laughs> what? What is he? What is? What does he want there? He actually fouled Richmond first, then he fouled Dawes. It would be two shots for Dawes. You pointed this out. Coach, who's their best free throw shooter, 87% on the season. Soriano comes back in. And Dallas, five out of six at the line tonight. Seventy six sixty eight in favor of the Pirates today. Wusu forces a ball three. Or Joe. And it's saved by Alexander. Jones for three. Short. Rebound yeah, Richmond. Oh, you got a foul. Trying to get it to Dawes. Couldn't get a handle on it. Now Tamir Harris has it. And Dawes is shaken up behind the play. And a foul is committed at midcourt. And Dawes is still down. I don't think they see it down there. Now Jameer yeah. Harris is. Forty three fouls called tonight. Yeah. Uh, St. John's fans heading for the exits. Down by ten with thirty eight seconds to go. 
But you got to give Shaheen Holloway a ton of credit. Alexander for two. St. John's has one timeout remaining, and Mike Anderson will use it. We'll take a timeout as well. Eight-point game, 32 seconds to go. Since then, Seton Hall has found some good momentum and has put their foot on the gas up by eight. It'll be Nadefo to inbound. Locate Stars, there's the foul by Colby King. I was going to say, if Dawes is any kind of not hurt, he's coming back in this game. When Corbello was ejected, St. John's led 46 to 44. And now they're down by eight. Those are frustrating things, Andrew, because they're kind of like self destruct You know, if he keeps his cool and doesn't get the second technical foul, you never know what happens. The steal by Nintendo. And he doesn't pull it out. Instead, he puts it in. I don't think Shahid Alvarez likes that one. He should have pulled it out. I don't think Mike Anderson loves it either. Yeah, I would not love it. Don't, they should go dump up this one. That's not right. Now, hopefully, this shake hands. Now, if they go shoot this one, then. No. Seton Hall was down by 13. They come back to win 84 to 72. A balancing act all night for Shaheen Holloway with the foul trouble the Pirates were in. But his team has now won.